Hello, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Nice to see you. I'm Amy Nolte. Today I'm going to give you an option for a feel. It's like if you've ever been at a gig and you've already played something swinging, you've already played a bossa nova, you've already played uh, something in three, and, and now you're just looking for something different. This is a little feel that I like to call all syncopated. All syncopated. And what it does is give you a more contemporary sound on straight eighths. Let me show you what it sounds like. You can use it on a variety of tunes. I like to use it on a ballad, a tune that you would typically think of as a ballad, like maybe um, uh, Blame It On My Youth. Let me show you. If I expected love when first we kissed try it on a tune that's in three. What if I try Moon River? on the and of one, the and of two, the and of three, and the and of four. It's actually a little trick that I learned from guitar players. A lot of guitar players play in this style sometimes. I love to try to copy guitar players. I think it's a really fun thing to do as a pianist. Let me show you on what would typically be a bossa nova tune, Girl from Ipanema. <laughs> track that I know of on the Discoveries album by Josh Nelson. He's a great piano player and this is just what I'm talking about, a pianist copying this style that probably originated in oh, Brazilian guitar playing. I, I think it might actually be something that inspired the bossa nova movement, maybe also touches on like a Brazilian polka, but all syncopated straight eighths. Actually, I don't want to play this without Josh's permission, but you should look it up. It's gorgeous. Let me show you a little bit closer up. You can see what's going on. Let's go back to the song Blame It On My Youth, and I'll show you how it works. It's a, for a pianist, it's a question of outer voices and inner voices working together. The first chord is B flat major in the key I played it. Now it doesn't really matter which note you have on the top. It does matter which note you have on the bottom. You need the root. But it matters that your hand, that these fingers, especially, yeah, I think just these four fingers are close to each other, close together. So I find that if you keep about an octave, maybe a seventh or a sixth of a distance with your left hand, it's really nice. And then the same with your right hand. You, you don't, well, I suppose your hands can't even reach further than that, but you need to leave this very close together. So for this B flat major voicing, I, I would maybe put an A on the top, and then it doesn't really matter which notes you play in the middle as long as they sound good in your chord. So on major chords, I'm gonna say that the notes that sound good are one, two, three, five, six, and seven. And occasionally, you can add the sharp 11. Sometimes I say that you shouldn't play the five on a major chord. I'm going to make an exception in this style. So that's one way you can do it. You use all of those notes that I said sound good on a major chord and you put them together right underneath your top note. And you're going to want to play the pedal. In Josh Nelson's example, he does this cool thing where he kind of makes the first one short 
the second one long and the last two short. You can, you can mess around with it a little bit and see what you like. I think that just gives a little bit more of an upbeat kind of a feeling to it. Um, a little dancier maybe. Um, whereas if you sustain every note equally, it gives it more of a subdued feeling. But you definitely want to play the pedal and change your pedal on every chord. Okay, the next chord is C minor. All you need to do is move to the root and give yourself a nice voice leading. So this one's probably good to come up to the B flat. Now notes that sound good over a C minor chord or minor chords in general are one, two, flat three, four, five, flat seven. And at times the six, you have to use your judgment on that. If a six is ever in the melody, that's a great time to be using it. So we were here. I did was take the notes that I told you would sound good and put them in the middle and I'm keeping about a seventh right here I expected love now we've got a D minor all I did was just move from the C minor where I had seven nine three five and I moved to a D minor seven nine three five again our next chord is going to be a G minor and let's think about the melody. If I expected love when first we kissed. So we've got these notes in the melody. It's always important to remember which notes are in the melody. Let's come at it. If I expected love when first we... I like this voicing here with the nine on the bottom. We do have two A's, but I think that's fine. I really like to, if I can ever put a rub between these two thumbs, that means very close um, distance between them, like a half step, I'll do it. When first we C minors coming up, kiss. Look at that rub, we've got three notes right together. I think that sounds so good, let's do that. Kiss, now we've got a G7. Now there are many notes that sound good over a dominant chord or on a dominant chord. So what we need to do, I mean, always the three and seven are gonna sound good, but we don't know if a 13 or a nine would sound appropriate or a flat nine or a flat five or a sharp nine or a sharp five until we know what notes are in the melody. So here they come. So that's kind of interesting, we've got We've got this four on the G, on the G7 chord. And we've also got a sharp five. So it's kind of a sus sound. And I think that's really nice. We should find a great way to voice that. Let's try. So we were, uh, da, 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 da. isn't it? Now I could edit this part out because I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I'd kind of like to have you see my process. So at first I played that 11. I didn't like how it sounded. Da, 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 da. I think we need to have the third in there. I don't think it needs to be a sus sound in our chord. Let's try. That sounds pretty nice. If we just have one flat nine, three, and five, and seven, da, da, that way, even though these are really boring root position notes, if we add that flat nine and there's that rub, it makes it interesting enough. Da, 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 da. You go right back to it. C minor, da. and it does it again, but let's change it this time. Da. What are our notes? Da, 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 da. Da, da. Let's just make it a little bit different. Let's keep this rub and we'll just lose the third and we'll just add this on the top. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Two rubs here, so nice. 
F7. B flat major coming up. Da. Sometimes I use my thumb to cover two notes. That's kind of an organ trick, but you can get you can get more notes out of your hand that way. Da, 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 da. F minor. Let's do something like this for our B flat seven chord because that's our that's our root note or that's our that's our melody note. Da. That one's nice, isn't it? You can think of it like a G triad over B flat seven. It's really the 13, the flat 9, and the 3. So let's try again from Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to take you through that whole song. But that's the basic of how to do it. You've got these outer notes. These outer notes and these inner notes. And the inner notes, you just want to put as close to each other as you can. You want to try to have some rubs where you can, some dissonance to make it beautiful and interesting. Let's talk about Moon River. I play Moon River in F. I love that there's an 11 on that D minor chord. It gives you all kinds of options. You can play every white note except for B. They all sound marvelous on that D minor chord. If you add the B, it changes everything. It makes it a little different. Um, and I don't think it fits in context. Okay, so let's try. If you can reach the 10th, that's a really nice voicing. You're putting the third and the root, and then you've got these notes. Moon River. I think that's gorgeous. You can do it any way you want. You can you can move it there. Just avoid the B. River. 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 You can also change notes while you're in there. You can have this nice parallel motion. River. B flat major. What? Now what's that note? That's a sharp 11. So that gives you license to fully use it in here. So now any note on B, ma B flat major in a B flat major scale, except for E flat, because that's the suspended tone and we don't want to use that. We can use the sharp 11. We can use any of them. They'll all sound gorgeous. Okay. Move. I just hopped over the B naturally. You don't you don't want to hit that, but you could you can move to the to the B flat. I think it's visually helpful, really, to see my hands like this and to just get a sense for for how it feels to move these voices, these inner voices, with these four fingers, and keep something on the outside. Mild, Day. Now we've got a half diminished chord coming up, which is a good thing. It's an E half diminished. There it is in root position. I've already told you that I think that the sharp nine sounds great on that chord. Somebody wrote to me and told me they did not like the way it sounds. So you're going to have to use your judgment. But the four is a good tone to use on a half diminished chord. So in Amy's book, you've got one sharp two flat three, four, flat five, and seven to use over that, over a half diminished chord. Crossing you in style someday. There's your melody note. There's no problem with conflicting melody notes. It's just this note. Someday. I might just use it in, in passing like that. Day. I did it, I, I might, cause it, because it's a neighbor tone, day. If I did that, I think it, it's kind of a cool situation. It gives you license on this A7 chord to actually use the sharp seven, the major seven over a dominant chord. Because you did it in this bar. Isn't that 
that cool? So the way that I did it was I added a flat nine. Maybe I didn't play the sharp nine. Something like that. Crossing you in style someday. And then we've got a D minor chord. I'm getting a little bit muddy down here. I think I'd like to just open up a little bit. You dream. And now we've got a 2 5 to B flat. Maker. This is really cool, I think. Um, I, I use the exact thing I was doing on the C minor chord 9 flat 3 5 7. And then I tried to keep as much of it as I could for the F7 chord. So I keep that 13 and I rub it right against the, the dominant seven. I've got a flat five. I've got another 13 up here too. Because I, because I had it before, it's nice to keep it again. You can move that one. You see how it works? I think it's so nice. Let's talk about Girl from Ipanema. Um, that one has some nice chords that I think would be helpful to go over. Two rubs, one there, one there. Tall and tan and young and lovely, the girl from Ipanema. This is this is a G7 sharp 11 13 chord. The melody dic dictates that 13, and, and we often put a, a sharp 11 on it. So on this chord, we have license to play these notes. I don't think we can play the five. I think it would sound bad. From Ipanema, of course, walking, and when she passes each. Now we can play F sharp seven, which is a tritone substitution. I'll make a video about tritone substitution soon. But for now, I just kind of like to take what voicing I had for my G minor and move it down to all notes that would sound good on an F sharp seven chord. I think that one's great. So we've got the seven, the nine, the three, the five, and the seven again. So that we have a nice voice leading here, I'm gonna double that seven. And then I'm gonna go to the 13. That's another thing to think about with this top voice is that you wanna have some nice voice leading. That's, that's just an F sharp major seven chord that we use between the first A section and the second A section. Let's spread it out a little bit. Look at that. I can take I can take just these two thumbs and play the exact same thing I played before. Maybe I played that. Can't remember. Either way. And I can I can just open it up and make it more beautiful and higher. What I'm thinking about there is the way that this sounds. My whole focus was on my pinky that time. I, and and you, can, you can shift your focus as you play. It, it would be nice if you could focus on your, on your melody note up here, your voice leading, and on your inner voices. So what if I what if I did that whole section again, kept it this way, but I could keep my focus in both places? I think that would be really nice. And what if I wanted to do some some of this parallel movement? Let's try. Da, 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 da. Right there, I played a six on a minor chord, didn't I? I thought it sounded nice. So many options in this style. I absolutely love it. My guitar player, Mike Scott, sent me this. I asked him about this style today, and he said that he has this book that tells him a little bit about this pattern and it was really nice uh, you can see it right here example two 
and it's called Danza, Danza de Urso, or Candinho. And that example comes from Polka Brasileira. Um, I, I think this just means like some rhythmic accompaniment patterns for guitar. Anyway, I think it's so nice for just this example of, of playing the and of one, the and of two. Uh, look how they broke it up. They broke it up into measures measures of two instead of four, like me. And that's important. I, I'll bet you know if you're if you're taking from the Brazilian influence, it'll be important to feel it in two instead of in four. This is good. I'm glad he sent me this. I hope you liked this. I hope it was um, helpful to you and it gives you something new to think about, a new way to accompany yourself or to accompany others. And just to practice, it's a really fun way to split up voicings and get your ears used to hearing some nice rubs or dissonances. All right, thanks everybody. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.